What's up everybody, 915 Mang here, gonna do a video today on cleaning up my sump. Uh, the sump was nice and clean when I initially, you know, built the stand and everything. It's been a couple of years now, and you can see all kinds of detritus just built up in the sump area. Um, I used to have some, uh, these ceramic rings in there. I had two big bags of it, and then I went ahead and took them out. The main section of my sump that I want to really concentrate on is the refugium right now this is just a protein skimmer section you can see how dirty it is i have live rock in there i have chato i have all kinds of crap in there i'm sure i have some uh fireworms and things like that so it's important to go ahead and wear gloves basically all i'm going to do is turn off the return pump which is my old return pump for my 45 gallon cube i'm going to turn off the auto top off and then I'm just going to drain everything using a MaxiJet 1200 pump and then pump it into, uh, I got a 20 gallon long and also a 10 gallon tank. When I did this, I really didn't think I was going to make a big mess, but that's not the case. Uh, I should have used some clamps to secure the hose and also uh, I should have had some towels ready just in case I made a mess. I don't know about you guys, but uh, me being in this hobby, I have a ton of uh, those buckets. And those buckets actually came in handy. I separated my uh, stuff from my sump. Live rock, I had some nice Tonga rock in there. I had threw the Chato in uh, another bucket. And I threw my mangroves in a third bucket. Now, if you guys didn't know, I used the shop vac to go ahead and empty out my uh, auto top off reservoir. Had a ton of calc washer paste all over the place I couldn't clean it and then finally I just thought about it you know what I'm gonna use an old shop vac that I have around laying around my house and I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up so I'm gonna do the same thing with the the sump and uh, as you can see it does a great job another thing you might want to do before you even do this if you decide to clean up is turn off your heater guys you can see how boiling hot it is and being the smart guy that I am I burnt the crap out of myself yeah, I burnt the living crap out of myself and it hurt like a bee. I bought this little foam pad stuff from uh, Petco. All it is is a carbon filter pad. And what I use it for is basically a filter sock. It does a great job at keeping my water clear. Um, on the main display right now it's looking a little yellow because I just emptied out my sump and then pumped it back in. I also took advantage of uh, this time and I did a water change. Um, speaking of water changes, what I'm thinking about doing, guys, is adding an air bubbler. You're like, an air bubbler? Yes, an air bubbler right there in my uh, overflow since it's in the center of my tank. Uh, and supposedly, micro bubbles are really good for your tank. Um, so I'm going to give that a try later on. And with an air bubbler or air stone um, or probably an air wand or something like that in the uh, overflow, I can get some water movement and keep my uh, overflow drains clean. It's basically just gonna be an experiment. If you guys already done that, let me know. Some of you may be doing it in your tanks as it is, but uh, I was watching a video on uh, American Reef Channel and they were talking about that. So as it is, I uh, cleaned out some Tonga branch that I had in my tank in the bottom of the sump, and uh, I just cleaned it out. It had all kinds of little barnacles. Basically, I used a little plastic brush and I, I scrubbed the crap off of the uh, tonga and uh, also I right here on this rock it it was taking a hit some of this SPS and you can kind of see where it turned white and the reason why is one because I'm not an SPS master and two the main reason is because the GSP was stinging the heck out of it but down there in the sump I got some nice pieces uh, I'm gonna probably stick uh, some kind of encrusting coral to grow on there and I put it there on, on the uh, this side of the tank. I'm trying to get some Mystic Montiporta to grow on there. And then these little rocks right here are just a bunch of GSP frags. That GSP is from where that was staying the SPS. And uh, I just made a whole bunch of those frags out of it. But as you can see, I'm kind of running out of room. I have a frag rack here. I have a frag rack on the opposite side of the tank. And uh, I've moved those frags onto the rocks and things like that. I've glued them in place. Um, but uh, I accidentally broke my Digi. Uh, I really like this red Digi. It just pops at night. 
looks really dark and red. It's really nice. I would like to go ahead and get some more digis, uh, a green digi, a purple digi, and probably about it. it seems to be like a fast grower. I ended up getting that from a 67 Mustang. Here's the other frag rack that I ended up making. Uh, this is on the back panel of my glass, and it's just a bunch of bird's nest. And uh, also pit some a uh, couple pieces of uh, purple stylo. The purple stylo grows pretty fast, and as you can see, you can see my tank is getting filled with uh, frag racks again. I may go ahead and try to sell some of them, not really for ex large expense or anything like that. Maybe five, ten dollar, eight dollar range, something like that. Uh, really, just not trying to make money, but if I can sell it to somebody that's just starting off and wants to give some SPS a try, then I'll go ahead and sell it to them. Also with this branch of Tonga right here, I want to go ahead and try to get the Mystic Montepore to grow on it and crust on it. That'll be sweet. And have this whole log right here just full of Mystic Montepore or maybe some different kind of uh, Montepore and crusting coral. Uh, there it is. I've got a whole bunch of GSP. It's the long hair kind. Long strands, really nice, bright green that I have on my other branch of uh, Tonga in the center. Another thing that I was doing is cleaning out my overflow and my overflow area. That's why I want to stick those uh, bubble wand over there. Kind of get some water movement because the water just spills over through the top and then down the dorsal. Um, overflows are an area that a lot of us probably neglect. And uh, I cleaned mine out because uh, it was making funny noise due to the fact that the uh, RO tubing uh, that I have for my dorsal was getting clogged up. And all I did was run the uh, hose through some hot water, very hot water, just clean out all that uh, salt creep in there and whatever calcium deposits, um, which is another reason why I want a new tank. Uh, I'm really looking at that 150, but it's gonna have to wait. Um, and the reason why I also I don't really like the way my overflow is built and designed, um, mainly because I usually get fish stuck in there. I had got uh, my Starry Eye Blenny stuck, and uh, as you can see, it's not a whole lot of space to work with to get them out. So the way that I did it, I took the dorsal part off and f reversed it, took the cap off and just totally reversed it. I had it flood out, and then I tried to just wait until my uh, fish could swim out. Because I have a crate right there, which I just super glued, and uh, sometimes it just doesn't uh, work. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up, guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and clean out your overflows. I bet you it's dirty as heck. Um, I really like the Aquion uh, Marine Land uh, overflow corner overflows, where you can see what's going on in there, and you probably have a lot more room to work with than what I do. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. You guys take care. Like and subscribe.